From the Barbados Today Newsroom, this is your evening news update for Monday, January 17. A family of five, including two children, are now homeless after fire destroyed their home at Wellington Street in the city. Rashawn Kadagan, one of the displaced occupants, recalled how the incident occurred. I called my boyfriend on my way home from work. I was by Golden Square Freedom Park on my way up. I saw a fire. I told him I'm on my way home and he stated that he was just finished cooking. I said I'll be there in 10 minutes. So when I got up the road, it was like 140, 150. And he stated to me, and I was like, something here right. So when I got closer, I saw the fire coming from the back of the house. I called out to Ziggy. I called out for my boyfriend and I called out for other people that said there's a fire coming to help. And that's when everyone came out. Barbados Fire Service Station Officer Cadogan said they received the call just before 2 p.m. We responded with three appliances. Uh, the first appliance is on the scene at 49. Uh, on arrival, there's one house fully engulfed. And we got this under control in, a matter, in about 10 minutes. Eventually, the fire was extinguished in approximately 45 minutes' time because we had to do some mopping up that Saturday. Barbados Labour Party candidate Corey Lane was on the scene and he told reporters the displaced family will receive immediate assistance. And I've been given the assurance by National Housing Corporation the Prime Minister and the Minister of Housing that that will be taken care of and I'm happy for the, the Welfare Department as well to respond. The two officers on scene took the information already and we have everything under control. The seven-week whole nurses strike is far from over. In fact, according to the leader of the Unity Workers Union, Caswell Franklin, some workers in other essential services have reportedly withdrawn their services in support of healthcare workers. Today, the nurses staged a second protest in the city, and Franklin told reporters the action will only intensify. If they don't sit down with us, we will be asking our members at the airport to take action in support of the nurses. Well, well, today, some of them have actually taken action in support of the nurses at the airport. So the airport is not um, up to strength today in terms of the technicians, because most of them call in sick today. If they don't do something about it, we'll ask all, because the airport cannot run without technicians. Because the, the international flights will not land in Barbados if no technicians are on the job. Because they're the fellows who fix the tower, who fix the lights, who fix everything. So we've shot, we fired a shot across the boat, hoping that they would listen. This government isn't known for listening, but if they don't, they will have serious repercussions. Just over 24 hours before Wednesday's general elections, electoral officials declare all systems are go for the poll. At a news conference today, Supervisor of Election Leslie Haynes QC said the voters list is all ready. Dismissing concerns, it was published too late. Much has been said and is being said about the publication printing of the register of electors being late. The EBC categorically denies that the register of electors is late. If you review the legislation, you will find that the 19 day period for updating the register ended on midnight on Saturday January 15th. The printing of the register was then completed yesterday, Sunday 16th, 2022. With this year's election happening during the COVID-19 pandemic, officials are leaving nothing to chance. The election workers will be wearing masks and face shields. The poll clerk will not be taken the ID card from voters will not be taking the ID card from voters, but will instead request the voter to show the front and back of the card. However, the poll clerk and presiding officer 
will sanitize their hands after any contact with the voter. Voters will be required to wear masks, have their temperature taken, and have their hands sanitized immediately before going into the polling station. In addition, the polling booth will be sanitized after each voter, and there are large numbers of new pencils at each polling station. But if all pencils have to be reused, but if at all pencils have to be reused, they will be sanitized. And now for today's COVID update, the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory reported 361 new cases of COVID-19 from 1,566 tests conducted on Sunday. The new cases comprise 163 males and 198 females. There are 102 persons in isolation facilities and 5,512 in home isolation. There have been 269 deaths. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, Jamaica's Health Minister Christopher Tufton is concerned about the growing number of healthcare workers contracting COVID-19 as the country battles its fourth wave of the virus. More on this report from Television Jamaica. Startling statistics of biblical proportions. Yeah, wherever you are, we're, we're two or three are gathered together. COVID is in the midst. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton commenting on the 68% positivity rate recorded on Thursday, the highest since the pandemic hit Jamaica. He says based on the recent trend of the COVID figures, seven out of every 10 persons are testing positive for the virus. And so despite the 10 o'clock nightly curfews, public gathering limit of 10 persons and other restrictions, he wants persons to stay in dorms at least for the next few weeks as the fourth COVID wave peaks. And if they can avoid it, stay home or, you know, congregate only where it is absolutely necessary. You know, enjoy your home cooked meal for the time being. Order, take in or take out. The health minister says he's been visiting major hospitals across the island and the situation is the same. They're running out of bed space. But Dr. Tufton is more concerned about the staff shortage at medical facilities. We are seeing up to 10% in some instances, sometimes more of staff that are supposed to or would normally be engaging in providing services, not being able to because they're in isolation. Um, because they have been um, infected with the COVID virus. He's and on the international scene, thousands of protesters have packed Amsterdam streets in opposition to the government-imposed COVID-19 restrictions and vaccination campaign. A diverse group marching for freedom in Amsterdam. War veterans, extreme right activists, anti-vaxxers and other lockdown protesters. I want to stand up for the future of my kids. That's important. But there are many infections right now in the Netherlands. Yeah, there are patients, but they're not dying. What do you think of the fact that the extreme right parties are also participating in this march? Yeah, uh, let's say it's uh, less than 5% of all the people here. And uh, we can't do anything to that. <laughs> Farmers joined a rally showing the demonstration was not only about the lockdown. Laten zien dat ook een heel deel van de boerenbevolking ook 
We want to show that farmers support other citizens to fight for a free country and for our freedom. For two years we have also been under a lot of pressure from the government. Last month the Netherlands had the strictest lockdown measures in Europe due to a late rollout of the booster campaign and a high number of hospitalizations and death. Under mounting criticism the government partially lifted those restrictions but kept the hospitality industry closed. In response, business owners opened their restaurants and cafes this weekend in protest. For many years it's clear the government should lift lockdown measures and open up society completely. Warnings that Omicron infections could soon paralyze parts of society are falling on deaf ears. Research has shown that distrust towards politicians and government institutions has never been this high. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.